The Bad Batch Season 3 Episode 9 has arrived, bringing with it the return of Asajj Ventress, and now it's time to break it down. It's her, Asajj Ventress. The Harbinger just dropped, and I think it's the best episode yet. Hold on to your helmets, we've got a ton to get through today. You must be a Jedi, right? Now we're past the halfway mark of the show, with the big draw of the trailer taking place in this episode, it does make me wonder what else is set to come our way. I still can't figure out what side you're on. My own. It would be great if you could leave a like on the video if you enjoy it and subscribe to the channel if you want to catch more. With that out of the way, let's get into it. Nah. Well, that's the last of it. Go catch something big to eat. You got it, Becca. Thanks for the help, Corsair. The episode opens to Rekka and Crosshair, muscles and marksmanship. Flexing their non-combat skills, they're heaving crates with the local dock workers. And Crosshair's got that look, you know the one where he's about a nanosecond away from sniping his own day. He's a sharpshooter, not a stave door, and he's not shy about letting everyone know it. Rekka on the flip side is all in on the helping hand gig. The squad's on pins and needles, waiting for a ping from Fennec. If you've been keeping up, you know they're desperate to crack the code on the M-Count Enigma and suss out why the Empire's got a target on Omega's back. It's all about keeping her safe from the big bad Empire's clutch. Now we smash cut to our dynamic duo, Omega and Batch are chilling by the shoreline, but hold up, Batch has got ants in his pants, darting off after some critters headed for a cave. It's a full on creature feature, Batch is freaking out, but Omega's there to dial down the drama, reminding him it's the same old cavern they've explored before. But spoiler alert, this ain't your typical cave crawl, things are about to get a whole lot weirder. Inside the cavern's belly, Omega's curiosity leads her deeper into the shadows, but Batcher, he's got cold feet, backing out until he's a nose show leaving Omega to face the music alone. And what a tune it plays when she spins around to lock eyes with none other than Asajj Ventress, the enigmatic link in Fennec's chain of secrets. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, or should I say beach, the Bad Batch's spidey senses are tingling and Omega's MIA. Batch is making a beeline for him, looking like he's just seen a ghost. Red alert, the team hustles to the cave, led by a panic-stricken Batcher, only to catch Ventress in the act, escorting Mega like she's a prize at the end of a treacherous treasure hunt. Hunter's on high alert, his protective instincts kicking into overdrive. Let her go, he barks, and Ventress calls us a cucumber. She complies, but not without a pine shot. A snarky critique of their hide-and-seek skills and a cryptic message that they're playing with fire. Asking about the Empire's M-Count bounties, you're drawing the kind of attention you really don't want, she wants. Back and forth, they go like a high-stakes tennis match until Assange drops a bombshell. Everyone's got an M count, but it's the high rollers who might just have the force on speed dial. Omega's mind races. Does that make me a Jedi, she blurts out, laying her cards on the table. Asajj lays down the law. A high M count's just part of the equation. It's the Jedi training that completes the circle. And without putting Omega through the paces, her M count's as mysterious as the dark side itself. But we all know Omega, she's not one to leave stones unturned. Test me, she insists. I've got to know what's coursing through these veins. As the sun dips low, painting the sky with hues of an impending night, we return to the cavern's mouth where Asajj Ventress initiates Omega's trial. There stands Omega, a pitcher of focus, balancing on one leg with an apple perched atop her head, striving for the Jedi's meditative poise. Asajj's voice, seasoned with the wisdom of both the light and the shadow, guides her through this rite of balance and concentration. But the scene is far from serene. The Bad Batch, ever vigilant, cast a weary eye on this unexpected mentor. Their trust isn't easily earned, especially when the spectre of the Empire looms large. Their suspicion only grows when Crosshair, armed with Tex intel, unveils the truth. The mysterious mentor is a Sarge Ventress, once a Separatist assassin, and a name they're all too familiar with from the war's darkest days. Overhearing whispers of her past, the Sarge perceives the rising tide of distrust. In a decisive move, she halts the test, deeming it as a failure, not through lack of effort, but for the disturbance of peace. She then sends Omega on a quest, a solitary climb to the mountain zenith to pluck a leaf from a specific tree before nightfall. This task, seemingly simple, serves a dual purpose, to test Omega's resolve and to shield her from the brewing storm of conflict below. In the similar intention of the standoff, Asajj Ventress delivers a chilling prophecy to the Batch. Her words laced with forewarning, whatever you're plotting, it's doomed to backfire. Choose your next move wisely. Clone Force 99, grappling with the revelation of her true identity, demands her departure, but Asajj, ever defiant, insists on completing Omega's test, hinting at a lingering presence that unnerves them all. The Batch's patience snaps, they draw their blasters in a desperate bid to regain control, yet they're swiftly reminded of Asajj's formidable might, as she effortlessly wrenches the weapons from their grasp with the Force, 
sending them clattering to the ground, the air crackles with tension as they're left with no choice but to confront her in a raw display of hand-to-hand -hand combat. The Bad Batch seasoned warriors forged in the fires of countless battles stand their ground with unyielding resolve, yet Ventress moves with a dancer's grace and a predator's precision. Her prowess in combat undiminished even without her lightsaber, one by one, they fall before her, their skills unmatched by a sheer force of will. In the chaos, Crosshair seizes a moment of distraction, reclaiming his sniper with a sniper's instinct. They unleash a barrage, a blast of fire, a desperate attempt to turn the tide. But a Sarge Ventress, ever the formidable foe, ignites a yellow lightsaber, a beacon in a dimming light. With deft movements, she parries each shot, her blade a whirlwind of light and energy, as the clash of wills escalates to a crescendo. Now, in the rich tapestry of Star Wars lore, the hue of a lightsaber is more than a mere aesthetic. It's a window into the soul of the wielder. The kyber crystal at the heart of each saber is a blank slate, a canvas awaiting the touch of its destined Jedi. And it's in this bonding that the crystal blooms into color, a reflection of its master's essence and path within the Force. Mace Windu's rare purple blade, for example, is a nod to his flirtation with the darker aspects of the Force, tempered by his ironclad will. The yellow saber, as brandished by Sarge Ventress, is a beacon of her evolution, a signifier of a Force user who transcends the binary of Jedi and Sith. Ventress wielding the yellow lightsaber is a subtle yet profound declaration of her alignment, yet for the Bad Batch, unversed in the deeper symbolism, it's a mystery as enigmatic as the Force itself, a symbol whose true significance dances just beyond their grasp. Omega's return marks a pivotal moment, finding the Bad Batch ensnared once more in Asajj's web. Yet she imparts a truth they all know too well. The galaxy isn't what it once was. She is a mystery, a force of many facets, but an adversary she is not. With a gesture of release, she parts from them, an echo of change in the force. As night falls aboard the Marauder, the Batch grapples with the Enigma of Ventress. Hunter warns Omega of the danger she poses, the trust she is yet to earn. But Omega, wise beyond her years, posits a truth that resonates with hope. Change is the constant of their universe. She reminds Crosshair of his own redemption, a testament to the potential for transformation that lies within them all. Now dawn breaks, and with it comes a new chapter in Omega's journey. She strides to the harbour, her resolve firm to meet Asajj for another day of training, this time sans the watchful eye of the Batch. Aboard the modest vessel, the final test looms. Asajj imparts wisdom of old, creatures of the sea, are drawn to those who can communicate with their essence. With a gentle command, she urges Omega to close her eyes and extend her senses. On the shore, the Batch observes, hidden yet vigilant, while Asajj acknowledges their silent guardianship. Omega grapples with the task, her frustration bubbling to the surface. She questions Asajj and, in turn, Asajj herself about the true nature of this exercise. To illustrate, Asajj steps to the boat's edge, beckoning the bioluminescent beings from the depths, a testament to her connection with the living force. But tranquility is shattered as a colossal squid, disturbed by their presence, slashes out. Omega is ensnared, pulled into the abyss, but without hesitation, Asajj plunges into the depths. A lightsaber a beacon of hope, with a swift strike, she frees Omega, returning her to the safety of the boat, their bond strengthened by the ordeal. The Marauder's crew watches, hearts in throats, as Asajj Ventress asserts her mastery over the beast below, with a command that resonates through the Force. She quells the creature's fury, ensuring safe passage for all. As the Marauder descends, a moment of unity is forged in the simple act of Asajj taking Crosshair's hand, a gesture that speaks volumes of the evolving dynamic between her and the Batch. Back in the cave, Asajj's revelation casts a shadow of mystery over Omega's fate. Despite her observations, Omega's M count doesn't seem to be remarkable, leaving the true reason for the Empire's pursuit a mystery to them all. Theories abound regarding Asajj's journey post-Dark Disciple, with whispers of her raiding Quinlan Voss and shielding force sensitives from the Empire's grasp. This clandestine operation known only as the Hidden Path remains a beacon of hope amidst the Empire's relentless hunt, a hunt that we now understand is fueled by their insidious cloning experiments. In this era of uncertainty where the remnants of the Jedi are scattered like stars in the night sky, Omega's significance transcends the Force. Her unique genetic legacy, a rarity among clones, positions her as a pivotal figure in the galaxy's unfolding drama. The episode draws to a close with Hunter's concern etched into his voice questioning Asajj's fearlessness in the face of the Empire's looming threat. Her response is a testament to her resilience, a sly hint at her storied past and the many lives she's lived, a nod to the enduring spirit of Asajj Ventress, whose tower survival continues to captivate and inspire. Now, Asajj's return in the Star Wars universe is indeed a tantalizing development, hinting at a larger narrative arc yet to unfold. Her storied past and the potential for future adventures offer a rich vein of storytelling possibilities. Whether she becomes a part of the cavalry in the season final, aiding Clone Force 99, or her tale continues in Tales of the Jedi, or a new series about the Hidden Path, 
Ventress's journey is far from over. Now, if you enjoyed this breakdown and want to join us on more Galactic Adventures, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our future uploads. Does it make us apparent nothing special M count ruler out of using the force? Let me know down in the comments below. Remember, every like, comment, and share helps support the channel and keeps us creating the content that you like. So if you're feeling generous, give that like button a tap and consider sharing this video with your fellow Star Wars enthusiasts. Until next time, may the force be with you.